guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Mariah and here on my channel I post university lifestyle physio travel etc kind of stuff if you're interested in that make sure you check out the rest of my channel after this video give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it and yeah keep watching make sure you subscribe because I know there's quite a few of you watch me and you get your advice from these videos but you don't subscribe and you miss out on other advice that I have to give you so today I'm coming through with some advice about how to apply, how to seek out your elective placement while well, sharing how I did it anyway. So when it comes to your elective placement, if you're not sure what an elective placement is, it's um, the placement that the university that doesn't give you. It's the one that you typically source yourself, you may pick it in an area that you're really interested in, or you may pick it in an area that you're like, oh, okay, it's convenient for me, blah, 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 like one area that you're missing out of the core um, like core sectors for your profession but I'm just talking about physio in this case so for me I've had neuro kind of when I did my mental health placement but I've had neuro, I've had respiratory but I haven't had any MSK experience so for me my elective placement I can well could have <laughs> Because I already organised it, but I could have used this opportunity to source my health and MSK placement. I've chosen not to do that, um, just because I don't have any interest in MSK. Even though, it, like you know, for most people, it's the smarter move, so you can get those core um, experiences in there, those core placements, because some jobs are to that. But anyway, in terms of sourcing it, so uni gave us a like presentation on. Um, Places we couldn't apply to basically because I study at the University of Birmingham and um, they basically said that obviously they have connections with local hospitals, local trusts, etc. And if we go applying independently, it doesn't look good for their connection and it kind of ruins what they have going on. So if we do want anything in the local area, that we have to do it through them. For me, that didn't bother me. I always had intentions of doing my elective placement back at home in London. Um, so my eyes were always focused on trying to find something in London. Now, one of the first things I did, because I heard it was very hard to find an elective placement in many cities, let alone London as well, um, I set up a spreadsheet so I could keep track of all the people I've emailed, called, etc. Um, but definitely, I'd say keep a spreadsheet, it just helps. For our uni, sorry, I don't know why I'm being buzzed right now, but for my uni, they um, said that if, basically, if you couldn't find a placement and you had evidence of showing that you've tried at least 20, 25 times, they will source one for you. Obviously, it'd be in the local area, but they'll source one for you. Um, so what I did is, I was like, okay, well, what do I enjoy? Mm, I enjoy neuro. Okay, cool. And then I was like, at that point in time, when I applied for my elective placement, I was searching for it. I hadn't ha I think I only had, I was coming to the end of my third placement at this point in time. So at that point, I'd only had, um, TNO, so um, trauma and orthopedics. I had um, OPAL, like short stay therapy, and ANU, and um, I was just finishing up my mental health placement. I had no idea that I was going to do pediatric, respiratory, and orthopedics. I didn't know that my um, place, recent placement was going to be um, a school, acute medicine, like urgent care. I didn't know that um, when I made this decision. So in my head, I was like, I have like no neuro. Well, no neuro, but no MSK, but I'm like, do I enjoy it? No. But I was also like, crap, I have no respiratory. And obviously you can tell the uni, oh, I haven't got this. And they know you don't have things sometimes, but they have, in my case, they have 60 students in my year. Well, my, yeah, my class to source that um, they may lose track of that. So I was like, I'm not leaving up to chance. I'm going to go for a respiratory one. I would be more interested in a respiratory placement than an MSK placement. From my experience, from what I saw, it seemed easier to source an MSK placement because most places seem to be open to doing it. Um, but anyway, so main thing is, okay, so I'm from London. I looked at my area, not like in terms of my local area, just my, I don't want to say my area, like my side of the Thames, basically. I was like, my side of the Thames, I don't really want to go to the other side of the Thames if I don't have to, but if it's a really good opportunity, I'll, I'll do the trek. Um, so it's like cool that was one of my criteria it had to be on my side of attempts and then I thought about okay what trusts are not the biggest like 
but the, I'm not, I don't want to say not the biggest, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to think of what to say. Um, I basically, I knew that going into seeking a placement in London, I would face the same issues that Birmingham was warning people about in Birmingham. The fact that many universities have connection and I'm aware that there's many universities in London that offer the degree. So in my head, I was like, I'm not applying to certain, I'm not going to trace certain hospitals because I know they're going to have these connections and I'm just going to get a sorry, we have connections to universities. So like, for example, I was like, UCL, no, not doing that. And then like Kings, no, St. George's, no. Like, I was like, I'm not, not going to put myself through that. Um, Cause I just know they're obviously going to prioritize their students because they need the placements, um, which is fair enough. But once I narrowed it down roughly and like cut out those big ones that I knew would most likely give me those answers, I then went to the trust slightly further out from zone one. And I was like, okay, let's give these ones a try. So I went on like their trust sites and I would find like the physio department and I'd either send an email to the physio department and be like, hi, I have an elective placement coming up and would you like, is it possible for you to host me kind of thing? I didn't want to give a full on email being like, my name's Brian, this and that and this and that and this and that. And then they tell me no, cause I'm like, oh. So I gave an initial email basically saying I'm seeking a placement, a study in Birmingham, blah, kind of thing. But I'm from London and I live in London and tend on moving back to London. So like that, because I changed it up a little bit, but I'll get to that. <laughs> so I started with that. And when I realized the tactic of, I was initially, sorry, I forgot a key thing here. I was initially applying with my university email address, but then it hit me, maybe quite a few places are rejecting my email and like just not responding full stop because they see it's coming from a University of Birmingham email address and obviously Birmingham to Ireland is down here in terms of location in the country. So they may be a bit like, mm, I think it's not. And obviously she's out of proximity. We don't have a connection with that university, which I might fit. So I switched to using my personal email address to find placement and changed up the wording a bit. So when you look at the preview heading, the first things you would see are like, hi, my name is Mariah, I'm from London, but I study at the University of Birmingham and I'm seeking a placement for her. But versus, hi, my name is Mariah, I'm a student at the University of Birmingham looking for an elective placement. Because I didn't want to be like, oh, mm, mm, no, cut me off. Um, it's just, yeah, tweaking little things, like, you know, tweaking little things to be in your favour, really. Um, so I did that. Uh, among emailing, I did phone quite a few places. I would ring and be like, because I, I noticed sometimes with the emailing, some of them took a little bit long. And at that point in time, we had to, I think there was like maybe a month and a half or so that we had to let the university know whether we were seeking our own placement or whether they were gonna to have to source one or whether we were going abroad, etc. So I was like, I want to have a rough idea if anyone can take me, like, cause they said they're not gonna be able to source placements for everybody. So I look for your own kind of thing. So I was like, calm, calm. Um, so in the end, it like narrowed down to two places. Um, one trust pretty much said yes right away and um, that they can take students. Um, yeah, one said, yeah, I can take students when I rang them on the phone. And then they're like, oh, we offer MSK placement. And I was like, mm, don't really want MSK. Do you have anything else? Um, and then they're like, oh, I can give you this contact with this other person I know who's within the trust and they do spiritual. I was like, bless, calm. So um, I got connected with them. And another trust, I like the location of it and everything as well. I was in contact with them and they were trying to seek a placement for me. See, it's possible they do take students, but they're trying to see like the availability and it just kind of fizzled out really. Um, so never really got a hold of them after that point. But um, yeah, in terms of like, I'm just gonna round it up here. So in terms of getting your placement, I'd say ring around a lot, narrow down your speciality that you want to do, um, narrow down the trust if you can maybe even explain to the trust as to why you want to be there and um, for that placement maybe it's because you intend on working there once you graduate that's also a good way to check out a place um i say think about the wording of your emails and your calls always be polite because it's a small community you never know who you're gonna bump into again you never know who knows who so yeah but good luck finding your elective placement 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below so we can share and help every, everybody, everyone helps each other. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.